So I brought my skeleton to life. Turns out I'm no Dr. Frankenstein. He just rises up and does a little jig. It most likely has something to do with Point A's transform and the waypoint group. Even though Point A is not up there, I'm not really sure what's going on. This is why I only work with sprites that have brains. Did a little more work on enemy inheritance and added an attack sound. I also tightened up the graphics a bit on level 3. We just finished level 3 and need to tighten up the graphics a little bit. Great. It would be nice if I could code like they do in those fake hacker movies. But most of the time, it's like, oh, I want to do that. <laughs> How do I do that? Tuesday I went for a walk with my wife. We found thousands of dead worms in a road. It was raining and I guess it drove them to suicide. I spent most of the day doing implementation test. Implementation test. It was maddening, but it was pretty fun. I did this on repeat. And then I added some collision to my attack using the animator and a box collider. And throughout the animation I changed its shape. I think it looks decent for the swing. I did have an angle, but I'm gonna have to... I ended up just leaving it, you know, straight because I plan to add a crouch attack later on. Looks great till I flip the sprite on the X and now I'm attacking behind my head whenever I face left. Also, this ended up affecting the wolf I made because it has two box colliders. One that detects if player is in range. This sets a bull to can attack if it is true. A big problem with it though is if I attack this collider, it also damages the wolf. So I end up removing that box collider. The wolf is gonna have to detect my range in some other way. You know what, I'm so done with col uh, box colliders right now, I'm just gonna give him a circle collider. This would be a terrible idea if I had a rigid body with no constraints. Woohoo! Alright, today's gonna be awesome. I gotta work with some stuff that uh, I've been wanting to do for a while. And that is changing the uh, color of an enemy when they're attacked. So my little wolf here, when uh, he is hit with my sword, his tent will change to red and then back to its default after uh, a little while. I feel like this adds a little like weight and engagement to the game and lets the player know that things are reacting to them. It's awesome. I spend most of the day uh, on a floating number system, something that it looks so simple in games, but when I try to implement it myself, it, I just had a really hard time. But that's probably because I wanted it to like work for everything, like a gold pickups, experience, when the player uh, does damage or gets damage. It got a little complicated, but when I got the scripts to work, or when I thought they were working, they weren't because I forgot to turn the debugging comment on in the inspector and I was working for a few hours trying to solve an issue that wasn't even broken. Okay great I get that turned on and it's still not working at least not in the scene. Oh that's because I coded uh, for UI text and I was using the text mesh pro prefab which you know is cooler because they can use gradients. I know I, I can feel you guys shaking your head at me now I'll figure out a way to use that later but for now I'm just gonna use the old UI text. So here's me damaging the wolf. Oh yeah, one damage. Pretty cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to offset that a little later. And now is a good time to mention the death animation too. Check that out. Sick. I look forward to uh, sharing this with you guys. That's all I have this week. I know it was only three days, but next week I'll be back with uh, four days of work, and hopefully uh, I will have some sort of a loot system for you. That would be awesome. Anyways, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that like button for some bonus XP, and you can always join the guild by subscribing to this channel. Thanks again for watching, you guys. Bye.